Shalom. Today we're going to look at another pair of letters that make a word and have meaning in the words associated with them. These two letters today are Kuf and Sadi, and we want to remember that in the middle of the word, that Sadi is going to look like the top line, but at the end of the word, that Sadi is going to look like the bottom line. Together they spell a word which is Ketz. And everything that we look at today is going to have to do with the end of something or cutting something off. Genesis 6.13 And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Deuteronomy 9.11 And it came to pass at the end of forty days and forty nights, that Yehovah gave me the two tables of stone, even the tables of the covenant. A few different translations, Numbers 13.25, and, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. It was the end of 40 days. Jeremiah 50.26, come against her from the utmost border, from the furthest part from the end of the territory. Open her storehouses, cast her up as heaps, and destroy her utterly. Let nothing of her be left. The basic verb is katsa, with a he at the end, in Leviticus 14.43. And if the plague come again and break out in the house after that he has taken away the stone, and after he has scraped the house after it is plastered, this is if mildew is found in a house, so he's scraping it, he's cutting it off the walls. Proverbs 26.6. He that sends a message by the hand of a fool cuts off the feet and drinks the damage. In other words, it's counterproductive to send a message by the hand of a fool. Katsa is also a noun. 2 Kings 17.32 So they feared Jehovah and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. End, it's the bottom, it's the lowermost part. Job 26.14 Lo, these are parts of his ways, but how little a portion is heard of him. But the thunder of his power, who can understand? The end of something is just a part of it, not the whole thing. There is also a noun form, katse. Genesis 19.4 But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, from every region. It's the end of a complete thing. Exodus 16.35 And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. It was the end, the edge of the land. Joshua 3.8 And you shall command the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, when you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand still in Jordan. It's the brink of the river, it's the edge of the river. Judges 7.17 7, And he said unto them, Look on me, and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, the edge of the camp, it shall be that, as I do, so shall you do. Another similar form, Ketzat. Daniel 1.2 And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. Daniel 1.18 Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. We're going to talk about the end of days later. So here is another word where the end of the thing is very important. It's kotz and it's a thorn. The important part of the thorn is the end of it, the point of it. Genesis 3.18 Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. 2 Samuel 23.6 But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away. They're useless people. They're thorns. We don't want them because they cannot be taken with hands. Another end of something is kayats. It's the summer. It's the end of the harvest. Genesis 8.22 While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer kayats and winter, 
and day and night shall not cease. Also in Amos, the fruit of the summer, Amos 8, 1. Thus has the Lord Jehovah showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. Now sometimes we get to the end of our emotions, and we see this in the form kutz. Genesis 27, 46. And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Chet. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Chet, such as these, which are the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? Leviticus 20, 23. And you shall not walk in the manners of the nation, which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, therefore I abhorred them. This is the, the end of the patience of God. This root can also mean to awake, in other words, the end of sleep. 1 Samuel 26, 12. So David took the spear and the cruise of water from Saul's bolster, and they got them away, and no man saw it, nor knew it, neither awaked, for they were all asleep, because a deep sleep from Jehovah was fallen upon them. Psalm 17, 16. As for me, I will behold your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with your likeness. Now sometimes this verb is given a root of yakats to wake up, but it has the same meaning. Genesis 9:24. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. 1 Kings 3:15. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of Jehovah and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. So many times in these small two-letter roots, we see different hollow verbs that have the same meaning. We see verbs that start with yud that have the same meaning. And here is a geminate where the last two letters are the same that have the same meaning. Where at the end of something, it's cut off. Judges 1.6, but Adoni Betzek fled, and they pursued after him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and his great toes. Psalm 129.4, Jehovah is righteous. He has cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Jeremiah 25.23, Dedan and Tema and Buz, and all that are in the uttermost corners, the end parts, the parts that are cut off from everything else. Another root that we see related to this concept is katsar, to make something short. You take the end off of it. Numbers 11.23 And Yehovah said unto Moses, Is Yehovah's hand waxed short? You shall see now whether my word shall come to pass unto you or not. Psalm 102.23 He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. He cut them off. Leviticus 19.23 And when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not wholly reap the corners of your field, neither shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. Now this is a verb form, katsar, but you remember that the present tense of the verb form, the participle tense, can be used as a noun for the people who are doing that job, and that's what we see here in Ruth 2.3. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was the kindred of Elimelech. Again, in a shortness of emotional strength, Numbers 21.4, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. They were shortened. Judges 10.16 And they put away the strange gods from among them and served Jehovah, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Now the actual noun for harvest is katsir. Genesis 8.22, we saw this verse earlier. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. In Psalm 80, verse 11, we see this translation. She sent out her boughs unto the sea and her branches unto the river, the part of the tree that might be harvested or cut off. And we have this word related, katsin, which means captain or ruler, in the sense that 
that is a person who makes the decision. And so something at that point is cut off, it's decided. Judges 11.6, And they said unto Jephthah, Come, and be our captain, that we may fight with the children of Ammon. Proverbs 6.7, Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. Isaiah 3.7, In that day he shall swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. I don't want to make any decisions. So I said we would talk about the end of days, and we see this phrase, miketz yamim, and it's translated in several different ways, Genesis 4.3, and in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Yehovah. First Kings 17.7, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And so we see this frequently with a specific amount of time, Miketz, so many days, at the end of so many days. Uh, let's see, here's an example. Numbers 13.25. And, and they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. So after a number of days, after a specific amount of time, you can see it with years, but it refers to a specific amount of time is over, and then the next action happens. Samuel 14.26, and when he pulled his head, for it was at every year's end, and the idiom there is miketz yamim liyamim, at the end of the days of the days, at the end of the year, that he pulled it, because the hair was heavy on him, therefore he pulled it. He weighed the hair of his head at 200 shekels after the king's weight. So miketz yamim speaks about a specific period of time being over. There's a different phrase for the end of days, or the latter days, as we think of the end times, and that is acharit hayamim, which means the latter part, the hinder part of, of all days. Genesis 49.1, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. And he gives these prophecies, and we expect for these prophecies over his sons to be fulfilled, maybe even now. Hosea 3, five. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek Jehovah their God and David their king and shall feel Jehovah and his goodness in the latter days. When we are talking about end times, this is more the phrase we're looking for, acharid hayamim, not the phrase with the ketz end word in it. We're looking for the latter days, not the end of days from a Hebrew idiomatic perspective. Until next time, tasimet ha'inayim al keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.